It's time for Dents and Dreams, a painless dent repair podcast focusing on how you can use the fruits of this wonderful trade we call PBR to achieve your wildest dreams. I'm John Bideen, your friendly neighborhood dent reaper and host of Dents and Dreams. Now, let's get started. Let's get started indeed. Today I have a wonderful guest coming to you straight from where in Missouri are you coming from? Randy <laughs> Fender, people. He... Hello. Uh, just west of Springfield, Missouri, right down on the corner. Southwest. Beautiful, corner. beautiful. Well, that sounds amazing. I'm. Uh... I'm vaguely familiar with Missouri. I've driven through it a few times now, going down to PDR World Cup, and yep, had the pleasure of stopping in at A1 a couple of times. But about 50 miles from Branson, and about 30 miles from A from A1. So love it, love it. Centrally located for a PDR tech, you, you got you got all kinds of awesome around you. That's a beautiful you thing. You bet. So, uh, speaking of PDR, how in the heck did you uh, find yourself with a bunch of different metal rods in your hand and, and pushing dents out of vehicles? What happened there? Well, I just, uh, I, I'd always wanted to do it. Every time I'd see a, a door ding or something on a car, I'd want that gone. I, you know, it, it didn't matter whose car it was. It'd drive me nuts. And I'd be like, I want to make that go away. And I'd always been amazed that those guys could do that and i wanted to figure out how so while i was working at the cheese factory i decided to uh grab some tools and start watching some videos and see how to do it and that was about two years ago and just kind of worked worked my way into this so it's it's quite a quite an adventure hold on a second here you were working at a cheese factory that's where I was. So you went from Wisconsin all the way down to Missouri just to yeah. learn PDR? Is that Unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, the, the processed type of cheese, you know. So I was working at a craft factory and uh, okay. did that for 10 years, 11 years, and hated every minute of it. So it's time to, time to be my own boss. Heck, yeah. There's a lot of really cheesy jokes that I could get into there, but I'm oh, just going to yeah. leave that alone. Oh, I'm yeah. going to leave that that's, alone. That's unlike you, John. <laughs> it's, yeah, you know, we don't want to be too cheesy. So we're, we're going to no, skip no right over that. I don't want to be cheesy at all. I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> so uh, how did you train? Did you, I mean, are we doing videos? Are we doing... Uh, in-person training somewhere where how did that all happen for you um started watching a lot of videos online and basically youtube um saw some jim mitchell on there and started watching subscribing to real world a little bit and uh watched that did that for a while went to went to his uh workshop in indiana is where i met you so yeah so, absolutely yeah was uh was there and that was that was a year ago i think yeah just just over a year ago now yeah, yeah. right yep. there and uh went there and didn't know squat and just kept trying kept trying then i uh i it's the name of uh Hiley's deal uh dent trainer yeah D dent trainer yeah yep. okay learn from learn from dent trainer some and then i went and trained with cliff Ramadan for a whole week and spent some time with him and that was a good time and he's he's a great guy there's not a better guy in the world and uh i did that i trained for three days with rick hummer and uh still didn't know squat didn't even know how to push a dent whenever <laughs> i was there and uh i learned a lot from rick and i learned that i wasn't seeing the dent which is absolutely true and it wasn't until a while later that I actually started to know what the dent looked like and actually knew how to get into the dent and how to push in the right spot. So 
uh, it's come like a flood, basically. I, I've learned and oh, yeah. I know how to fix any dent now. So it just, uh, once that, once that finally clicks, you're, you're in there. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's been quite the journey. Um, I, of course, there's I a lot to learn every so. day. No doubt. No doubt. It, it never ends. I'm uh, about 11 years in now myself and, uh, I'm still learning every day as well, and uh, for sure, you know the 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 frustrating days they get fewer and further between, but um, they still come every once in a while. So oh, you gotta, absolutely. Just try to keep an open mind and have fun with that. So, um, so you're working for yourself now, completely mm -hmm. pushing dents full time. Absolutely, and you're only. Only a couple years in, are you doing like mostly wholesale? You got body shops, retail, what? A All wholesale right now. So um, got uh, I've got lots of smaller dealers, and I've got a Chevrolet dealership, which is pretty high volume. So I'm uh, I'm doing all that work, and uh, yeah, it's 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 quite a lot. So um, it keeps me hopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good thing, especially early on. I mean, wholesale. I think is the name of the game just because of the volume you're going to find yourself in so many scenarios. And as you progress, you know, you're going to find yourself in retail situations pretty much by accident at first. And then as you have yeah. success with those, you, you're going to realize, uh, Hey, I think I would rather fix one car than seven. And, <laughs> and, uh, For sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then you get into the marketing end of it and all that good stuff, but uh, but yeah, That's it's it's a fun journey for sure, and and uh, gotta love the wholesale for the volume aspect of it, just because you you're gonna get you find yourself oh, yeah. in a lot of strange scenarios. So my guess is you probably have been finding yourself in a lot of big smash scenarios at your wholesale lots. Is that uh, is that a fair assumption or? Mm -hmm. stuff because they know that it can be that it can be made better and you know it can be repaired properly so i've shown them that's how i get in the door is i i ask for their bigger stuff and i take it back to them and then you know that's how i've secured all my accounts so i really enjoy the larger beautiful, stuff beautiful. It's, it's fun so right you know wholesale it doesn't pay enough but uh that's that's how you get into the retail aspect of it. So that is my plan. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're you. Even in a wholesale big smash scenario, when you're not making necessarily the money you should be, you're getting those at bats and those opportunities, and uh, they give you further confidence when it's time for for the wholesale stuff and. When you when you pull out the price event chart and price it appropriately, right? And I, you get that first one done, and the customer loves you, and instead of the used car manager saying, "What took you so long?" Uh, <laughs> it's a great it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. For sure, so. absolutely. I haven't heard that yet, I'm but uh, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's crossed their mind occasionally. But uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> Yeah. Just keep working. Keep going. You betcha. So with all this big smash work, uh, it sounds like your 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 gears started turning. There was smoke coming out of your ears, maybe. I don't know what happened. I wasn't that's there. Just, that's that's but, uh, nothing happened. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, how did that happen? Do you re do you remember like having the aha moment, or was it kind of a progression? Or I uh, I work with a lot of the I won't say any brand names or anything like that. Uh, some of the other aids that are out there, and you know, using you know pulling techniques and things like that. Um, got a lot of tools that I'm probably not going to need anymore, but uh, it. Uh, it taught me how to use that stuff, things like that. And, you know, it's, it's progressed from that. And the damage is getting bigger and bigger. And I just thought this isn't working for this kind of stuff. So 
one day I was just sitting there going, okay, you know, I saw some products that are out there that are, you know, like big pole units. I even thought of sinking a pole into the concrete floor of my garage so I could pull off this thing. And, you know, I thought, well, I really don't need to do that. And then I saw these other devices and I was like, well, that's, that's a great idea. And I just don't have that kind of money to purchase those things. And I would like to have something. And I thought, what's heavy that I could pull off of? And I mean, it's just kind of a, it's just kind of a no brainer, common sense type. I'm out. I don't know what happened. Uh, you cut out on me. Uh oh. All right. Now I, now I can hear you. Okay. Okay. So you, you cut out at, uh, you saw some of those other devices. Uh, and you didn't have enough money to, to to purchase them. Right. Yeah. And I mean, who? I mean, I'm not spending that much money. I mean, I don't care if I've got a shop or not. I'm just not. Um, kind of a frugal guy. And I thought there's a there's a more common sense way for me to make something happen on this. And I thought, what could I pull off of that is going to be more useful for me? and not take up so much space because I do a lot of mobile stuff. So I thought I've got a vehicle with four contact patches and it weighs 6,000, 7,000 pounds sitting there. Why don't I use the trailer hitch? Why don't I come up with something that I can pull off of that? And that's where this idea came from. Man, oh man, I don't know what's going on. You cut out again there. Uh... (laughs) Did your Bluetooth turn on there? It may have. Well, Maybe. no. No. Okay. Bear with me for a second. Yeah, so if you guys don't know what we're talking about, it it's called the Pole Master, and it's available at a1pdrtool.com. And um, I'm going to see if I can pull it up on Facebook here and share my screen. We can watch that video. That'll be a really good description of it. And hopefully by that point, uh, Randy's um, technical difficulty will be resolved. Can you hear me now, John? Oh, really good, yeah. Okay, I stepped outside, so... That'll you help. The, you may hear the birds cheeping, but uh, other than that, that's... Hey, that's a beautiful sound, to, especially to a Minnesota guy, you know. Definitely. I mean, geez, Randy, I spent the last four months in a frozen tundra here, and uh, you're down there with birds chirping, making up new tools, making all kinds of money with your big smash work, and I'm <laughs> over here freezing, haven't seen a feather in, a, in I don't know how long. I mean, geez, Louise. <laughs> Cheers so, to you on that. Thank you. Well, you can you can enjoy those sounds. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a beautiful sound. So yeah. So okay. So you you you're figuring out that the dollars for some of these devices are a little higher than than you wanted, and the space they take up is a little bit more than you wanted. And you just, I mean, were you, you just were looking around one day or you kind of had this, uh, how do you, how do you come to those scenarios to having uh, a fully functional tool on the market? Well, I just started thinking about how to do it and I had the idea and I was sitting there and I was like, I need to come up with some way pull or trailer anything like that oh disappeared for a minute i got all this uh i've I've got all this heavy weight here and i've got a perfectly suitable item we just make an erector set of sorts and i could uh i could pull off that and so i i started thinking of how to do it and I used, you know, your example, I used the, 
Rick Cummert's example, and I just thought, you know, John calling back or away, and I could just, I could make something, and or present present them with something, and they could make this thing really easily, probably. And I called up John, and I just had a conversation with him, and this is probably less than two weeks ago. And he said, "Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll go with your design, and and we'll we'll figure out something here." And you know, he uh, he brought me you know, for a prototype, and I, I tried it, and I was like, I made the modifications, and then we ended up doing the video on it, and it's just it's great. I mean, the thing is is exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks super cool. And I think what I want to do is share my screen here and and just play that video for everybody so they can kind of see it. You are still a little bit choppy, but uh, I think everybody's getting the the gist here. But I think I'm I'm thinking if I share my screen and uh, just show everybody this video, um, that will be a great way for us to show everybody sounds good what we're working with so i'm going to go over here we're gonna go full screen on it and the volume is low john
right, so there's that video. It looks like Randy's buffering a little bit there. Now he's back. But, yeah, that that says it all, really. I mean, simple, simple system and everything seems pretty self-explanatory there. It's, uh, it's a really a no-brainer. It's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Got to... Got all kinds of connection points where you can pull in multiple different directions all at the same time. Um, it's just so simple and so easy. And, uh, you know, it's just it's just something that I thought that people needed without breaking the bank. I don't I don't like to have to pay thousands of dollars for a piece of equipment whenever something simple and economical will work it'll last forever i mean literally that thing will not you can't destroy it. right right absolutely now um so you got basically a three-piece deal you'll need some ratchet straps and uh preferably a moving blanket that probably is going to be the one that's going to have the right amount of weight but um what's the longest the longest beamed what's the length on that do you know it is three foot long on the upright. Okay. So that should fit just about anywhere. Uh, sure. And then uh, do you know what the total weight on that thing is for everything? It can't. It's not any more than maybe 20 pounds at the max. I haven't weighed it, but uh, it's not heavy. I mean, it's, it's not heavy, but it's super strong. Gotcha. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Got to, got to love it. That is uh, good on you, Randy. Good on you. I I especially love it when we see some of these newer guys like yourself uh, come into the industry. They've got a fresh perspective, and they just see things a little bit differently for whatever reason. Uh, It's pretty easy to get stuck in our ways and, and only see things in the way that that we've been taught and uh i think i think a lot of newer techs are going to end up coming out with stuff i've i've seen it uh before and and now and i'm sure we'll Uh see it again and uh it's really encouraging it's really encouraging you know at at the rate our industry is growing uh there's a ton of stuff that's going to be coming out and you know i've i've said it a hundred times probably wasting my breath saying it again but i know there's a ton of techs out there with really good ideas you know either on their tool cart or in the back of their truck and uh, i just i i ask you guys all to bring these to market and uh, it's going to help a lot of techs out there i mean i guarantee you somebody somewhere on a lot has tried to you know macgyver up a situation (laughs) so they had something to pull off of and uh you know sometimes i'm sure it works out and and sometimes i'm sure it doesn't so uh, yeah i just wanted something really simple really easy it's very easy to put together the even the pins there's no moving parts or anything to break and you're not going to destroy them. There's nothing. There's nothing hard about it. It's just so self-explanatory. Absolutely. So let's get into uh, some other questions that I like to ask everybody. Now you've only been doing PDR for two years, mm-hmm. uh, roundabout. Uh, but have you ever gotten a, these questions from people that that? about pdr maybe you're fixing a dent maybe they're just you know your friends or your neighbors and you tell them you're doing pdr now and and then they have all these crazy questions uh you ever get any of these that oh yeah just irk you what's your what's your favorite or or least favorite uh, of those would you say well uh you know my least favorite is can't you just pop it out yeah. Yeah. Let me pop that out. <laughs> That's my favorite one. Yeah. So, absolutely. Just pop it out. You, do you have a bit, do you have a, don't you have a big suction cup you can pull that out with? That's, that's, <laughs> that was, that was my yes, first, sir. 
my dealer, you know, the, the big dealer that I work for, that was his, that was his question on this one particular vehicle. And I was like, well, let me look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yes, take sir. a look to see how, yes. see how big this suction cup's going to have to be. Yes, sir. And now, uh, the next question I like to ask everybody is, you know, what do you think we can do, uh, within the PDR industry, uh, on, you know, an individual or, or maybe a grander scale, but what do you think we can do to, to really increase the public awareness of what PDR is and, 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 you know, more so make PDR a household name. That's, that's what I'm hoping happens in, you know, sooner rather than later. And, um, I like to ask everybody because I, I never know what I'm going to hear. So, Well, I think, uh, you know, with all of the social media we've got right now, I think everybody that is a paintless dent repair technician, I think they should absolutely get on Facebook, Twitter, whatever, and basically introduce themselves as a paintless dent repair technician and explain the process. And I think that would go a long way helping them understand how it's better to preserve your factory paint job and you know no accident report things like that not just it's not just popping out a door ding anymore it's it's a lot more than that absolutely absolutely yeah and i i, I agree wholeheartedly and you know, I see so much of it as a tech myself. You know, I follow a ton of different dent guys, so I'm seeing it every day. And I I just wonder what your average consumer is actually going to be seeing on that level. And, uh, you know, I need to do a better job of it too, that when I am putting out that content, that I do explain that stuff and that I, you know, I do try to educate the public i mean we're not we don't get that many opportunities you know it, realistically you know i see i don't know uh, probably hundreds of before and afters or you know i see great videos i see just static before and afters i see it all um but i don't think you know your average your average Joe uh, is necessarily following 200 PDR guys. So uh, right. it's, it's hard. It's hard well, for me to know. They're not. It, it's hard for me to know if that stuff is working. And, you know, the other problem is so many of us uh, are in that same situation. We all have those blinders on, and, and it's hard to know what the general public or how they perceive us. So um, I'm just going to keep digging into that. Definitely. And, you know, try to ask more and more people that are a few steps away from our industry and, and get a better idea of of what would be the best way to do that. And, you know, I hope everybody else out there would do the same and, and we can make, yeah, you we just, can make PDR uh, famous. You need to, for sure. Yeah, the, uh, I think whenever you're doing the paintless dent repair, you almost have to be a salesman as well. And I think uh, selling, selling what you're actually, you're a little choppy there, but I, I, I fully agree with what I believe you're trying to convey here, which is, which is uh, selling in the moment to the customer, explaining the process a little bit better, how we do it, what the benefits are, how it's how it's better to maintain your factory finish, how it's it's faster, more convenient, it's going to retain the value of your vehicle more, and be a better overall repair than than you know repainting your vehicle and you know using fillers and and all that stuff and you know staying off the vehicle history report everything so um that is gonna be absolutely key 
Uh, For sure. And I so, think, yeah. you know, I mean, like I said, you know, the, the, the social media as big as it is right now, I think it's, it's key if you want more business for uh, people to uh, get on their social media and like, if, if you show. Man, oh man. Well, Randy, you know, you're, we're a little bit choppy here. Uh, so I think. I think at best, maybe if we just cut this short right now, I think we got a lot of good information out there at this point. Everybody go check out the Pole Master. Now, if you're watching this, the sale is over. So $395 is the price uh, on the Pole Master, but that is uh, significantly less expensive than, than many of the other options out there. And, um, you know... Check it out, watch the video, see what you think. Um, I'm definitely going to be getting one for myself, and uh, I hope uh, I hope anybody that's doing big smash work could see the value in it. I certainly think it's going to be uh, a great thing to have in my arsenal, and uh, you know, it's probably not something I personally am going to use every day, but when I need it, it's going to be a, a huge help. So, for uh, sure. I thank you for uh, for bringing that one out here to all of us, Randy. I think uh, a lot of guys are going to get a lot of good use from that. You're gonna you're gonna save a lot of headaches and a lot of time. So that's awesome. Much much appreciated on that, and uh, you know, I just I thank you again. And uh, you know, Randy, it, it seems to me you're doing it from the cheese factory to uh <laughs> to owning your own business and uh doing something you love and uh, and now bringing tools to the market to help uh to help your uh your fellow PDR brothers and sisters so super amazing everybody just just get out there and do it if you you got ideas bring them forward and uh and just hey live your dreams guys that's all till now. We'll we'll see you on the next one and and thanks again. Thanks, y'all. Just wanted to thank you for listening to another episode of Dancing Dreams. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, compliments, or complaints, I can be reached at Dent Reaper across social media. And be sure to subscribe to the Dents and Dreams Facebook group and or YouTube channel. Cause that's where it'll happen if and when we go live. Thanks again.